Welcome to the Look Good, Move Well podcast. Okay. Well, welcome back. We're in the studio here at the Functional Bodybuilding Lab. I am joined by Satya. We got Nate helping us out here in the studio. Everything's looking good. We got levels. We got audio, vis- visual, lights. I'm not sweating. We have your microphone jankily taped up. My microphone is taped up by this very elegant looking tape, scary sticky tape. Um, I took the component home that you know attaches it. So... Nate did some MacGyver moves over here. I'm not sure that our listeners know who MacGyver is. <laughs> oh, no, that's sad. You're going to make me feel super old. <laughs> <laughs> I know MacGyver. Um, look it up. Do a Google. Yeah, Google wiki, that. Wiki that. And uh, what we have uh, today is um, a topic that I think we come back to regularly on the podcast. It, it makes a, you know, makes little uh appearances here and there because i think it's something people genuinely struggle with and it's like there's maybe a misconception about what it means to be motivated and how motivation you get motivation and when you see somebody who has had success you just i think there's this assumption that wow this person is just forever motivated like they never they never struggle they never struggle right and I get that question often in direct messages. Hey, Marcus, how do you like keep up your motivation? What's your motivation strategy? Like, give me some tips. So you said that somebody asked you, or you've seen a thread of it showing up in our Facebook group. And I'd love to hear what the context was for those questions. And then we can shed some light on it. Yeah, I've seen a lot of little variations of this question come up in different ways. And I think that the theme that I'm seeing is more around the word discipline. Mm -hmm. So people feel like they're not disciplined. They see people who look like you and they assume that you're 100% disciplined and that there is some step, some mysterious step between where they are and where you are that they could possibly take to be as disciplined as you are. Mm, Yeah. I think that these two words are essential to discuss together. Mm -hmm. Discipline, motivation i have so many ideas on where this could go but um i'll start by saying that you know books and podcasts or different uh things maybe on social media that i come across when when there's like a an instant connection to the message there that's, it doesn't mean that like I knew it already, but I just had an intuitive sense that there was something to this. And and the book I'm thinking about was years, a couple of years back. You know, I got, I became aware of who Jocko Willink is around the time that most people did. I think he did his first podcast after you know retiring from the SEALs or whatever, and from the Navy with Joe Rogan or Tim Ferriss or somebody like that. And I was like, okay, this guy is in my awareness now. And he had a book called discipline equals freedom and go read the book it was pretty uh pretty good read um but there was there was this message of discipline in there that really unlocks uh was that the name of the book no it was not the name of the book but that was like a concept within it that's his slogan i that's forget his what slogan. his book was actually called oh can't hurt me was his autobiography i think that or? was david goggins uh, i always get those two mixed up <laughs> anyway it was a leadership book but discipline equals freedom is like his mantra like a big mantra yes yeah. um i don't want you guys to go look up the wrong book okay don't type in discipline equals freedom even though you'll probably get the same thing uh you'll okay. find it you'll find it jocko okay done yeah. okay moving on <laughs> But the discipline was, as he puts it, this anchoring behavior or character characteristic that gives you the freedom to have everything you want. And I really believe, I, I resonated with that a lot. How much discipline is required? You know, that's the question I think people want to know. And this is where motivation comes into the, the picture, Having discipline is only really necessary when you're trying to do something <laughs> that like maybe your physiology or your psychology is telling you like, oh, I don't want to, you know, it's hard, right? Like, you know, it's, 
if you get the urge to go to the bathroom, like you don't need a lot of discipline to like go to the bathroom. It's just <laughs> yeah. like, do I have to go? Like it's coming out, <laughs> top right? Top priority. <laughs> yeah, top priority. <laughs> um, but you know, I I need discipline to turn the show off at night and go to bed early because the show is addictive. Mm-hmm. It is built. Netflix is built to keep you on the platform. It doesn't want you to go to bed. It wants you to watch more, get the hour views up, get the subscription, you know, get all that up. So you have to work against your psychology and your physiology to do the thing that is better for your health or could be better for your health or you've been told is better for your health, right? And until you've done that, you've broken through with the discipline once, twice, maybe it takes you 30 times to do the discipline and break through to then you're like, whoa, I feel amazing when I shut the Netflix off at nine. I'm doing it. I'm just doing it. I don't need discipline anymore. I am motivated, intrinsically motivated to do this behavior, right? It's like I had to delete the TikTok app. TikTok app. Ah, but I'm so addicted. Yeah. Ah, d- d- delete you know yeah took discipline to do that and to not download it again and to not check your phone and and now you're like whoa i don't i don't have tiktok in my life this is pretty sweet like i'm not spending three hours a day just looking at you know cats chasing you know bugs around the room or whatever is your thing on tiktok dance moves i mean i've fallen into i looked at tiktok for like three days and i was like whoa this is not gonna add something to my life right now because it's really just consuming so much of my time it's so addictive i got to get rid of it so it takes discipline up front to set these behaviors and then intrinsic motivation can come through or extrinsic motive some motivation and but it's not just like once you're there then you're set for life right right and that's i think what people like they're like why do i keep going back to the beginning yeah marcus you don't look like you ever have to go back to discipline like you just seem motivated all the time Mm -hmm. and that could not be farther from the truth Yeah, I think that's very important to be clear about that because when you think about something like fitness that's hopefully part of your life for your entire life, then there are necessarily going to be periods where you're not going to be as into it or your life is full with other things or you're stressed out or you're having a physical issue that makes it harder. And so I think it's really helpful to get very precise about what you tell yourself mentally, how you motivate yourself, what pieces you put into play in your life to structure things so that you can have more success when you're not feeling as intrinsically motivated. Mm. Definitely. Um, What are some of the things that you've practiced in your life that have helped you to find that balance of, you know, finding discipline when you need it and, and then hanging on to motivation when it's there? Yeah. I have a whole pocket full of discipline helpers. (laughs) (laughs) And one thing I want to say first, though, is that my friends all say that I'm one of the more disciplined people that they know. And if you look up my true coach, you'll see that I have checked off over 800 workouts completed and I don't tend to skip days. But that doesn't mean that I don't struggle with it. And it's funny because I struggle with it so much mentally sometimes that it almost feels like I didn't work out at all. Mm -hmm. And then I get back into the gym and I have to kind of push myself to get in there. And I feel like I'm the worst person ever at pull-ups and it's so hard. And then I feel like, oh, I actually did get a little bit stronger. And so there's something about knowing that the process happens if you show up even if you've dragged yourself there by the skin of your own teeth, that I think has like been a good learning for me over time. But that doesn't always help me in the actual moment. I think things that help me in the actual moment are scheduling, like having a a defined rhythm for when I'm going to do my training. It's like if there's a 10 o'clock meeting, I'm always showing up for that meeting on time. Same thing with my training, just prioritize it the same way. And there's something about just like being in the same place at the same time with your shoes on, ready to go. That really helps build that rhythm. Um, Accountability helps me. So knowing that my coach is on the other end of my 
training program because I work with someone personally. I work with Shauna. So I think, oh, Shauna has programmed this workout for me and she's going to know if I don't check it off. That's another thing. Mm -hmm. And then there's something about, I'm going to call broadly novelty. So having some tiny thing I'm excited about in that workout. And it could be that I've just gotten a new pair of training shoes and I just want to go break them in. It could be I found a new cool song to listen to. It could be I've never done this particular kettlebell complex before and I'm excited to try it out. It could be I want to do like a little bit of like a, you know, bicep curl finisher when I'm done and like that excites me for the day. So just finding something, even if the whole training session overall feels overwhelming. Um, as I'm listening to you, I'm just, it's like, a, it's almost, it's almost putting all this together in a, in a kind of a concise model, which is like, we've talked about discipline, we've talked about motivation, and then there's what you're talking about, which are like anchoring habits or habits that you've created and habits allow you to have enough consistency to execute discipline even in situations where you're not feeling motivated right Right, it's like it's all part of this puzzle which we're trying to find out for every single person to get enough consistency to feel the way you want to feel in life and maybe you only need 70 percent consistency to feel the way you want to feel so what habits and what amount of discipline is required to get you into that that flow state of motivation where you can just get your 70% and you can feel great. And then you decide, Oh, I want to, I want to bump it up a notch. I want to lose 10 pounds. I want to get shredded. I want to lose a couple percent body fat. Okay. Well, it's going to require more than 70% consistency. It's going to require 80% consistency. And you're not a new person. You might be, you might want this thing, but you're, you still have the same life and same demand. So you're going to run into obstacles just as frequently. How are you going to ramp up your discipline? Are you going to implement better habits? What are those habits going to be? You know, and and is the motivation going to suddenly, you know, oh, you got a new goal, so cool, you're motivated in the first week, but then that motivation might die off, and then you're now just like, this is my regular situation, my regular life. So, I I I anchor on a lot of discipline because my motivation is, you know, it's not a hundred percent all the time. This morning I got to the gym and I we I had a couple hours before our meeting and it man it was like I was like I kind of just I felt all this pull to do work like there was just the long list on my on my computer on my notebook and I was like okay all right just start you got to do this now this is your training time this is the block you have like I was trying to make deals with myself I'm like could I do this at 11 I'm like no I have calls like no I got to do it now and I just got to moving and I created I went through the rhythm I said okay I'm just going to pull the sled for five minutes backwards I'm going to do my warm-up and if I feel good go for it and then like eight minutes in I was like I need music (laughs) you know like I (laughs) went and got my headphones I put them in and I turned up the music and I'm like okay this is feeling better and you know, I like, it was a little cool. So I like, I kept my sweatshirt on. I pulled the hood up. I'm like going through all the tricks that I have in my book to like get me into this focus zone. And like by the second set of back squats, so I'm like on the clock, it said 25 minutes since I had started. I was like, okay, I'm feeling this now. Yeah. Like I just, that was a good set. And up until that point, I didn't really, wasn't feeling awesome about it. Um, and so that was, you know, those were some habits that I've, you know, kind of created in the past that helped me get into some focus mode. It required a lot of discipline, but now I'm like, okay, the week is off to the right start. Yeah. And thankfully I didn't push it because tomorrow's workout's going to be easy. I'm going to get, I'm going to be psyched for it, you know, and then Wednesday's going to be good. And then maybe Thursday is when I'm going to struggle again next, Mm -hmm. or maybe it's next Monday, but there's going to be a time each week. And, um, anyhow, I'll just pause there and let you jump in. Okay, great. Because there's something I want to tease apart here, which is that there is a separation. And this is what I was alluding to earlier. There's a separation between the work that actually happens and whatever mental gymnastics you're going through in your mind. And I think that those two things get compounded sometimes and people get a little bit hung up on it because they make an assumption that you can't train or you shouldn't train unless you are 
into it or motivated right. or focused. Like people want to give it their all. They don't want to feel like they're just half-assing it through every workout. Yeah. But there are steps to it. And sometimes it's just about making that deal with yourself. I do the exact same thing where I'm like, oh, just get the bar. Your body doesn't feel like snatching today, but just get the bar. Just do your little warm up and then see how you feel. Mm -hmm. And then 10 minutes later, I'm like, oh yeah, like I'm feeling this. Mm -hmm. So there are things that can happen totally regardless of what you're going through in your mind that still make it worth it. Yeah. And, and I think it's like, you know, one of the struggles I had over the years with health and fitness was feeling like, ah, oh, I need to keep the discipline to do this behavior. But then the behavior itself wasn't really rooted in a lot of like good fundamentals of like health and wellness. Like, I, oh, I got to stick to this low calorie, you know, diet. I got to just have the discipline. But the super low calorie diet was actually not positively motivating and reinforcing down the line because eventually it started to burn me out and yeah. wear me down. And I think that that's something that people can get into, um, you know, struggles with is they're like, oh, I gotta be so disciplined to eat the, to just do the 500 calorie a day shake diet. And it's like, no, you don't like that's maybe misplaced discipline. I'm not saying that a better solution is going to require no discipline, but it's like finding these anchor behaviors, these things that you're going to do that are going to create the consistency that you want, that if you put in enough discipline they pay off big time and they make you feel better and that's been like a a way for me to like navigate and sift through what makes sense and what doesn't i believe there has to be some discipline in any health and fitness pursuit that you want to make because our biology and is set up to take it easy like right don't don't go do the workout like just sit on the couch and eat the carbs it's good for you it's you're gonna you know, that's better than going expending a bunch of energy and tearing down your muscle and working against evolutionary bi biology. So there's got to be some discipline. But once once you're in harmony with that, f you know, your physiology and your biology and you're doing these behaviors that took a little bit to get started, they should have a very, very immediate or sh like relatively soon positive feedback loop that make it feel motivational. Now, I wanted to like set that stage because recently someone asked me a question on an AMA was, hey, Marcus, like how long does it take you to recover from like a cheat or a treat, you know, meal? And it was funny because I just had this like weekend away and we, I had a couple drinks, alcoholic drinks. I ate, you know, giant uh, Mexican food dinner with lots of gluten, which I don't typically ever have. Then we went and got ice cream afterwards, which was like, it was just an indulgent night. And it was extremely delightful and made me happy. And I, and it, and I didn't feel right for the next two, three, four days. Like it messed with my biology. It messed with my digestion, my, my sleep, how I was feeling in my brain, um, a lot of things. And so it took me days to get over that. Right. Um, and I immediately had to go back to discipline because the next morning, like I it was like, it was, Oh, I got to wake up and do the thing that I know is going to help me feel like myself again soon. And I was a choice to have that treat because I knew going into it, it's like, okay, well to get back to baseline, I'm not going to just wake up tomorrow, feel great. And unless I do the discipline, for the next couple days, I'm not going to feel great on Wednesday either. If I just kind of let this ride out for a while and like have another, you know, similar day of eating tomorrow, it's going to just compound and make it harder for me to get back to feeling like my normal self, doing my normal routine and feeling motivated by that. Because after you eat some ice cream, if it was good, which it usually is, it's like, that's pretty motivating. Like I want to eat some more of that. You know, that's what it does to our psychology. So there's kind of like this, <laughs> what is a treat meal? Well, it's a, a treat because I know it's going to impact my ability to just easily get back to life. Like I need to show some discipline after that to get back to how I was operating prior to it. 
Yeah, I'm so glad you made that point about wanting to make sure that your disciplined behaviors are actually good for you, even if they don't feel that great in the moment sometimes. But I'm thinking of Jocko's 4 a.m. wake up non-negotiable, you must or die kind of vibe. And I've been an early riser, but I know that if I'm putting my kids to bed late and I'm not getting a full night's sleep, that's not going to be good for me. So making sure that it's actually in line with what supports your well-being overall is very important. Yeah, I love, I love, you know, there's like a couple YouTubers that I follow who are like really they're really into like the self experimentation. And, um, I love when they like do these 30 day experiments. I'm thinking of Matt Diavella. Yeah. And he does these 30 day experiments where it's like 30 days of cold showers or 30 days of waking up at 5am versus his normal 7am and discipline to do that. But he like really evaluates. Okay. I love that. That was great for me. Or, that didn't work for me at all. I think it was his 5 a.m. wake up. He was like, I thought I was going to be so much more productive. I thought I was going to get so much more done. Everyone talks about like all these, you know, super high functioning, you know, CEO types do it. And he's like, I just ended up wasting all that time getting sleep deprived and just feeling pretty bummed out. (laughs) He's like, that doesn't work for me. So you have to to determine for yourself through self-experimentation and awareness, what's, where's your discipline even like, well directed you Mm -hmm. know it's like don't direct it at something that doesn't have this like you know sort of flywheel like get you going and now it's going and now you're just like oh this is great i love it uh on a recent podcast i was on you know the host called it like it's like the inertia you got to like get over that like you got to start the ball rolling with discipline but once it's rolling you know it could be rolling downhill and that's great you're just you're along for the ride once you've you know, for, for some people that's like cutting the carbs, right? They just have carb heavy and then they cut carbs in the first week, maybe 10 days is sort of miserable. It's like they're going through like the carb detox. Like there's like the, the digestive systems kind of bacteria dying off. You're just maybe tired, maybe kind of like feeling a little lethargic and then whew, like, whoa, and then it clears up and you're like, wow, this feels great for some people. And then that just, I don't need that, you know? Now, will you ever eat a carb again? For sure. (laughs) There's lots of them in your face. And if you don't hydrate well, and if you under eat calories, or you're not prepared with good protein, guess what's going to happen? You're going to reach for something quick and easy, which is going to be refined sugars. And it's going to trigger that whole brain pattern and connection and, you know, uh, addictive center in your brain that's going to say oh this is good you do this and then you might have to redo that process of weaning off carbs again which could be you know another 10 days or if you catch it soon enough and you have the self-awareness and you inject that discipline early it's only going to be a day or two of feeling kind of bummed out about it and then you know fast forward 10 years and you get to intentionally have sugar treats or you know carb treats if it makes if that's what you want and you can kind of get back to you know life within 24 hours no problem so you can build up a lot of the foundation for this sort of the resilience by the more consistency you have in life and that's what happens with training for me it's like yeah i've done training so long that I could just not work out for a week and then next Monday I just come back and I'm right back in it. And that's, but that's not because I'm like the most motivated disciplined person in the world. It's because I just have such a a long history of doing it that those feelings of motivation that come from doing some training are so deeply ingrained in me and just like embedded in my nervous system that once I just go and, block the time off, do the sets. I feel it right away. I'm like, yeah, this is why I do this every day. I love this. Yeah. What about the slippery slope where let's say you've established some good disciplined habits and you're in a consistent rhythm of let's say training or even nutrition. And then as humans, I think we always want to make it a little bit more challenging and a little bit more complex. Mm -hmm. And how do you know when you're tipping over too far into something that's not really that great? 
yeah, uh, I was thinking about this earlier when we were talking. It's like if you there's sort of that like sweet spot of discipline, like where and I can't answer this for everybody. It's just like, you know, when I know when I'm starting to feel like this is really requiring more discipline than I want it to require. That's then what's like healthy for me. Like I want to like shred out a little bit more and like really get lean and do something extra for my body composition. And I'm like once a day or once every other day, like having to be like, I shouldn't do that. I need to like stay disciplined. That's more than I want to be thinking about that. Um, or with training, it's like, you know, I got to like right now I'm in a, like a, I'm, I'm, I'm training twice a day. So I know I'm doing double days. I know you're doing double days. <laughs> um, but it's not taking a lot of discipline. You enjoy it right now. I'm having a blast. Like I just, I get up, I go in the sauna and the cold tub every morning and 30 for I got 30, a 30 minute window usually where I don't have to get the kids up yet. I just get on one of my cardio things. And you know what made that habit possible? I moved all the cardio equipment in front of the sauna. I have to like navigate around it to get to and from. Smart. It used to be underneath the side of the house, out of sight, out of mind. And now it's just there. And I'm like, okay, let's, let's, let's knock out 30 minutes of, you know, biking or, you know, nothing crazy hard. Yeah. Um, it's not real training. It's just movement, you know, and I can't go for a walk, which I would. I would go for a 30 minute walk in the neighborhood, but I can't leave the kids, you know, at the house sleeping. Yeah. That's my situation too. Right. Can't they just, can't they just be home alone at that young age? <laughs> haven't we figured out a way to like kind of hack this with some technology? Come on. Right. The tech, the tech baby. Bring on the robots. Can I, yeah, we need a robot to just pin the kids into the room and not let them out. <laughs> okay. Um, the discipline though, back to this, it's like right now it doesn't feel like discipline to do it. I'm, I've had a couple glimmers. Like I've had a couple days where I was like, I don't really feel like this is, a... all right, let's do it. Come on. You're on a, you're on a roll 30 minutes a day. Let's stick it out. Let's get at least a month of this. Cause that's how I learn as a coach and as an athlete, as a person it's like, well, how does this impact? How could this apply to somebody else? Right. I'm in a little experimenting, you know, a little, uh, creativity moment. So I pushed through, but if that were like every day, I was like, "Ugh, I don't really feel like this." Like, mm-hmm. that's a sign that, like, hey, this is this is the slippery slope. This is me just trying to do more and and push it because I've had results and I've had success with a lot less. So this is not like I'm not doing 30 minutes of cardio to like shred and like you know d- compete in something. I'm not. I'm just doing it because I'm exploring and it feels good. And I want to see what it's doing to my body. And if you feel like, like, well, how many calories are you burning? Are you increasing your caloric intake? I'm like, no, I'm not doing any of that. I'm just, just exercise. I'm just moving a little bit. You know, that's what it is. Um, so that, that, that's the slippery slope thing. It's like, when are you, how much added discipline are you having to bring to the party? And if it's, no, if you had zero discipline and you were starting from like, I'm always taking the easy way and the easy way has led to me feeling not good about my body, then you better be prepared to bring some discipline, which will ultimately turn into motivation. But if you're a reasonably disciplined person and now you added something to the table because you wanted to like get more jacked or, you know, really refine something or see if you could do something different and after two months you're like man this is feeling really hard that's that's the clear sign because um you don't need that extra to have success you just got pulled into the trap of wanting to do more and explore more and be a human and that's okay but just asking that question i think is valuable yeah what other advice do you have for people who are just looking for a little bit more structure to get more disciplined I, I just, I believe that like, I think these are people, these might, you might be an individual out there who's thinking, how do I get a little bit more motivated? And if you just reframe that, I need to be a little bit more disciplined. I think that that alone 
can help people a lot because the motivation follows discipline most often and it it shouldn't follow the motivation should not follow the discipline like a year later if that's the case then we're disciplining on the wrong thing yeah it's the person that comes to the gym who's been there for like two years doing personal training they're like i still hate the gym yeah it's like then let's fucking go to something else yeah. like there's a lot of ways to move yeah this is nuts <laughs> like you're don't wasted. do this to yourself don't do this to yourself you know <laughs> Like you keep on thinking like it's going to click one day. It's yeah. like, well, it's, uh, it's maybe been not. two years. <laughs> it's two years. You're not into it. Let's maybe go and try Peloton ride yeah. or something else. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that, it's just a, a mental reframe, I think is a starting point. And then from there, um, yeah, just remember that you shouldn't, you shouldn't feel like every single day of your life has to be like a hard disciplined approach unless you want to be world-class and uniquely qualified in something, then perhaps, yes. David Goggins, that guy is like a hard nose. Like, I don't care how crappy the day is. I'm going for this 20 mile run. Yeah. He's a unique person. And if you want to be like the best of the best, then you better bring some discipline, you know? Mm -hmm. And, and in that regard, I have been very disciplined in a lot of things, but I've also been very, very driven and motivated too through the actions that I'm disciplined in because of this, you know, positive reinforcement that they've all led to. Yeah. And I think I'd add one more thing, which is that it's advisable to take advantage of the snowball effect where if you're struggling, if if there's something you know you want to be disciplined in and you're just trying to get there, then breaking it down into the baby steps. Like I love how you just put your cardio equipment in front of the sauna. Something as simple as just making it super available can really make a difference. Put the bowl of apples right on the table in front of you every day. Mm -hmm. You'll be more inclined to eat an apple than a bag of chips. Totally. Love everybody out there. I hope this message and these words help you. And we'd love to hear from you and what you're thinking about when it comes to your own motivation and discipline. Hit us up in the DMs. We'll see you next time.